watching The High Road with me, Keith Warren. Brought to you by Timber Creek Outdoors. This week on Keith Warren's Hunting and Outdoor Adventures. He's coming to the left, right over there on the left side. Hunting and outdoor adventures begins right now. This week we're in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're gonna be going elk hunting. Uh, we're at an archery shop where we're gonna go pick up our gear, but we're not gonna be picking up archery equipment. We're gonna start out, we're gonna pick up some rifle equipment, and then we're gonna go to the airport and pick up our hunter. You noble? I'm noble. Noble, I'm Keith. I'm Keith, here to pick up you. that stuff for uh, Dwayne with Botech. Big heavy box over here. Is that it right oh, there? Yeah. Oh, oh. he must think elk season is going to be a long, long season. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's not as heavy as, as it looks. He may be wanting to move in with me. <laughs> Okay, this is going to be fun. No, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Nice to meet you. All right. Take care. I hope it turns a little bit cooler. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See ya. If I could find my truck keys, I'd drive away. Here they are. If we can get in with that get an accident, we'll hopefully find Dwayne waiting on us. Uh, rental car return, aircraft junior, parking terminal. Okay, there we go. I don't like doing this. I kind of get all nervous when I have to go through one of these deals, picking up somebody at the airport. Hopefully his flight is on time. Howdy! I knew you couldn't have brought very much yeah. stuff. Let me tell you something. The truck is full. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way you could have brought too much stuff. I'm Dwayne Tiller, general manager of Botech, and I've archery hunted all my life. And Keith Warren gave me a call and asked me if I'd like to have an opportunity to go on a muzzleload hunt. And so I jumped at the opportunity. I met him in Albuquerque, and he took me up to the Floyd Lee Ranch, where the USO Outfitters was guiding our hunt. I was excited about having the opportunity because I've only archery hunted. As most of you know, in order to hunt a lot of big game animals out west, you need to apply and draw a permit. For me, that is a complicated process because there's so many dates and rules and generally I have a lack of knowledge and I don't really know where the best hunting areas are and so on. So for years I've been using United States Outfitters. They're also known as USO. USO is an application service for many of my western hunts for sheep, goats, mule deer, elk, and antelope. The reason that I use an application service like this is that it simplifies the entire process. And by doing so, I know that it's being done correctly and it'll be done before any deadlines. Thanks to USO, I've managed to draw some pretty good tags too. But on today's hunt, there's no need for elk hunters to apply for tags. Because it's private land, USO has private landowner tags available simply for purchase. By the time this elk hunt became available, I had already made plans for a New Mexico elk hunt on another ranch. So I asked my friend, Dwayne Tiller from Eugene, Oregon to come instead. I would be there, but I'd only be shooting video. Hi folks, I'm Dave Huff with United States Outfitters. Some of you know me as Gadget. We're here on a private ranch it's about 300,000 acres in central New Mexico. It's the beginning of October and the rut is still hanging on there. They're still bugling pretty good, but it's kind of tailing off now a little bit. On behalf of George and Gene, everybody at USO, welcome to the Floyd Lee Ranch, New Mexico. I know the weather's a little funky tonight, but it's only supposed to be like this a couple of days. While the hunters gathered to hear the rules and to get their paperwork done, it was raining hard outside, 
and I was getting sleepy. I just hope for everyone's sake that the rain would let up. Try to get some sleep and uh, see y'all in the morning. And we'll get on it. I've never had the opportunity to use a muzzle loader, so this is the first time I've ever uh, been able to take uh, an elk with a firearm. We're here to promote hunting. We don't care what tool you're using, whether you're using a rifle, a bow, or a muzzle loader. We're for the sport of hunting, and we're doing all we can to promote the hunting. Well, Dwayne's a lifelong archer, and has done very little hunting using a firearm. As a matter of fact, this will be his first elk hunt where he's ever used a firearm and not a bow. The first stop was at the shooting range to make sure that his muzzleloader was still on. Ah, oh, six inches high, two inches left. Seriously? I'm serious I can be. That is the reason right there to check it always, always. Man, how can it be that far off? I don't know. Do it and see what happens. I'm going to shoot one more for confirmation. I, OK. I wouldn't move it until I shot it one more time. OK. Six inches high, one inch right. So okay, bring it down. Sixteen clicks. Sixteen clicks. See what happens. One inch high, one inch left. There's a full moon right now. A lot of folks cuss the moon, saying that the elk don't move or their habits change. I really feel that it doesn't change that much during the rut. They're going to be out there doing their thing anyway. And in fact, it helps us because we can see we're going to be out there before the sun comes up. And we may want to walk a mile or so to get to where we want to be. So the moon's going to help us see where we're going. OK, Dwayne, there's some elk down in the bottom. Let's sneak around the corner here. We got the wind in our face, so we're okay. in Let's get them. I wonder why this one isn't vocal. He may not want to talk too much. He's got happy with what he's got. He's got a couple of cows and he don't want to advertise. Let's go back up here on a hill, okay? okay. And, and we can see, because they're not talking. I'm, I'm sure they're in there, but they're not talking very much in there. And so let's go up on top of the hill and we can get a visual on them. Okay. Okay. See that bull down there, down in the flat? Yeah, he's a nice bull. Okay, he's, he's, he's freaking by himself. You can call him in? I think so. The ones that are by themselves are a little easier to call in than the ones with a bunch of cows. And the ones we saw earlier have a bunch of cows. So um, let's cruise around here to the left and uh, get down in there and get as close as we can get to him. Okay. And, and the wind is perfect. It's yeah. Right in our face. Yeah. This, this could be a really good setup. Uh, he, he's breathing pretty good. I mean, he, he wants some action. So uh, let's bail off down here and uh, watch your step and we'll get, we'll get down in there. Okay, I'll follow you. Okay. 
On this ranch in New Mexico, we have very high success. 75% uh, on the bow hunts and 90 to 100% on the firearm hunts. We usually take anywhere from 10 to 20 hunters per week and we have four or five weeks of hunting for their firearms and two for the bow hunts. So we have a lot of opportunities for you folks to come on out and hunt with us to match your schedule. We went out and started hunting in the scrub oak area. The terrain was not too bad. We found a little bowl area where there were a lot of elk congregated down in it. We uh, actually found the one that we wanted. It was about a thousand yards away and we closed the distance to about 500 yards. Our guy Gadget started talking to, to the elk at that time and, and cow talking. He's coming to the left, right over there on the left side. Yes! <laughs> All right. Smoked him, baby. Smoked him. Smoked him, baby. Boy, that is nice. Very nice. Nice heavy five by. Look at that. I'm pretty happy with him. Good deal. There's your hit right there in the shoulder. Yep. I mean, it slammed him. That, that setup you have really, really worked. Took him right down. down as fast as I've ever seen a, a help go down hit with a muzzle. Yeah. That's nice. Well, well, what, do you, what do you think, Dwayne? That's where we started, up there on those rocks. <laughs> no, we started on the other side of those rocks. <laughs> it, it looks a lot farther now. But when you're chasing an elk and he's googling it, I mean, time goes by real fast. Yeah. It's savage you know, put it on in there. You know, it's going to go right on through there. You got the right setup. He's heavy. He's going to carry his mass all the way up. This was one of, how many do we see this morning? Nine bulls, I believe, nine? Made, and heard more. Yeah, heard but more. Saw, but saw nine. Saw nine. Yep, I'm pretty happy with him. Right on. This uh, is my uh, first elk with a firearm. Really? Yeah, so I'm pretty tickled with this. Okay, but well, usually the other way around. A lot of folks will start out hunting with a, with a firearm and then kind of graduate if you will to a bow. Well, I started with a bow and graduated to muzzleloader. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, I'm happy for you. Well, um, I couldn't be happier. For more information on elk hunting or United States Outfitters Hunting License Application Service, call 800-845-9929 or visit UnitedStatesOutfitters.com.